Thank you so much for being at our Women of Achievement Luncheon. I'm Linda Guilfoyle, President of the Bradenton Branch of AAUW, and on behalf of the entire branch, I would like to welcome you and thank you for being here. We are so pleased that you could join us as we celebrate the achievements of our honorees. We have five very special women that we are recognizing today. Dr. Diana Green, Joan Crowder, Carla Neiman, Jane Plitt, and Carolyn Reynolds. Yes. These Women of Achievement honorees are dedicated to improving the lives of women and children in our community. This is really what AAUW is all about. Each of our honorees shines a bright light providing direction and support for others. They truly light the way in serving others. Please enjoy their wonderful stories that are in your program. Our luncheon today would not be possible without the support and hard work of so many. Uh, we would like to thank all of the AAUW members who worked on the luncheon. If you helped in any way with the luncheon, please stand up to be recognized. Our special thanks goes out to Nan Rankin, who is right over there, who is our chair. So thank you, Nan, for all you do every day. We'd also like to thank uh, Charles Clapsaddle and his Manatee Education team, Steve Graham. Whoops. Steve Graham for uh, coordinating and doing all of our beautiful baskets. Uh, Michelle Weidel and Fresh Market for the donation of the flowers. Our Women of Achievement Luncheon, yes, thank you, sorry. Our Women of Achievement Luncheon is one of our major fundraisers for the Scholarship Foundation. So we are doing a 50-50 ticket, so don't forget to get your 50-50 tickets if you'd like. Uh, Trish, if you would wave, yeah, Trish in the blue has the 50-50 tickets, and we have several people who are selling tickets for the baskets. So would you kind of wave if you're selling basket tickets? There's still time to buy those, and there'll be time, they're green, yes. There'll be time to put them in. Don't forget to tear them apart. You keep the one that says keep this, and you put the other in the basket, and then at the end of our luncheon, we'll be doing the drawings for the baskets. We are also very pleased that we have some uh, special dignitary guests here and some past honorees of Women of Achievement. Uh, Nan is going to um, introduce these people. Uh, we would like you to please stand uh, as you are recognized. Welcome everybody and thank you Linda for putting this all together. We do have some very special people. Of course, you know, you're all special because you're here. That's it. Um, we'd like to recognize the Regional Chancellor of USF Sarasota Manatee, Dr. Karen Holbrook. I didn't see her stand. Is she hiding? No, oh, okay. <laughs> Regional Vice Chancellor, USF Sarasota Manatee, Lee Williams. Director of Professional Studies, Boothine Cookman University, Edward Singleton. And the Support Service Coordinator of Bethune Cookman University, Sherry Orr. We welcome you. And a special congratulations 
to one of our past uh, honorees, Dr. Mona Jane, for being named, uh, having her new middle school named after you. Congratulations, <laughs> Mona. Thank you, Mona. We'd also like to recognize the past women of achievement who are joining us today. Uh, please stand when you are recognized. Ashley Brown. Liz Kokora. And I always say your wrong name wrong, Liz. I'm sorry. Elaine Graham. Barbara Harvey, Eileen Oldwine, Faye Murphy, who I might add started this luncheon event. Um, Twelve. This is our twelfth year. Dr. Marie Mary Lynn Parker. Major Connie Shingledecker, <laughs> Rosalie Schaefer, <laughs> and congratulations to all of you and thank you for being here. Your, your presence here supports many deserving women and men going back to school for their degrees. We thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Nan. We would like to ask that all of the um, Women of Achievement honorees, uh, past and present, would gather after our, our luncheon today for a picture. So we would appreciate it. Uh, this is also a great opportunity to hear a little more about our scholarship foundation. We have our co-presidents here today, Peggy Budkier and Anne Marie McShay, who are going to share just a little bit about uh, our scholarship fund. Hi everybody, I'm Peggy Budkier and this is Anne Marie McShay. We've been working together for the last six years uh, to, on the Scholarship Foundation. The foundation was founded uh, almost 20 years ago. Next year will be our 20th anniversary, actually, uh, to provide financial aid for regional applicants who meet our certain established criteria. Um, we have worked to keep this vision alive for our, our new generation. And uh, I want to introduce, we have one scholarship recipient here today, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about her, and then maybe I can persuade her to stand up. Uh, Sarah Youngsma is working full time in purchasing, and she just finished a leadership excellence workshop, which led to a part time paid internship. She's attending college almost full time, her words. Uh, she's just been accepted into an International Honor Society of Business, Beta Gamma Sigma. She's been accepted into a, a National Honor Society, Phi Kappa Phi. And she is a single mother of a beautiful 11 year old girl named Natalie. And which uh, she says also makes her a dance mom, choir mom, and sports mom, okay? <laughs> She has never-ending days. Uh, Sarah, can you stand up? We'd like to applaud all your accomplishments. Now, we're so proud of Sarah and all of our recipients, uh, and thank you so much for all the support you've given us over the years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne-Marie and uh, Peggy. Uh, all of the funds today will go toward the Scholarship Foundation, so we ap really appreciate you being here and your generous support. Um, 
So now it's time for lunch. We hope you enjoy your lunch and, and please enjoy reading the stories of these fabulous women in your program. And we'll be back soon to recognize these women of achievement. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. We are so excited about this part of our program. It's really what we've all been waiting for, the time that we recognize our honorees. It is such a privilege to introduce our first honoree, who I had the pleasure of working with for several years. Dr. Diana Green became superintendent of schools in 2015. She has made such a positive impact on our schools and the entire district. She's a true educational leader whose initiatives have increased student achievement and financial improvement in the district. During her 32-year career, she has served as teacher, assistant principal, principal. She's been a curriculum developer, a staff developer, and in senior executive leadership. She is known for her positive nature and her passion for improving the lives of students, teachers, and the entire educational community. Please help me welcome Dr. Diana Green to our conversation. So our first question, who, what <laughs> has been a major influence in your life and how did that play out as you have lived? Well, I would have to say my family has played a major influence. My father, um, who has passed on, was uh, in the Air Force. And so much of our lives was we spent living overseas. And so when I moved back to the United States, I could speak German and I had a French accent. Um, <laughs> Not something, um, when you move to Florida, many people would think that would be kind of unique. Um, and it was through that experience that I had to learn to love myself. Because growing up in the military, every, it's such a diverse environment. Uh, my parents will tell anyone today uh, we failed our children because we never taught them about racism. So we knew, we didn't know that it, that existed until we moved back to the United States. And we moved to, when my father retired, my mom is from Ocala, Florida, and we moved back to Florida. And the school that um, I was zoned to attend had not been integrated. It was 99% African American. And believe it or not, I had never seen that many African-American people at one time because I had lived abroad. And so it was very challenging to learn how to fit in in my own culture or my own race because I had never lived among my own race, as well as trying to live in a world where I was used to being around Caucasians, but Caucasians in that town of Ocala were not used to being around African Americans. So very quickly, we all had to figure out how we were going to survive and thrive in this environment. And what has influenced me today is that I love myself. And it doesn't matter what other people think. I am always going to do what is right. And as long as I can look in the mirror and be happy with the person that I see looking back at me, then I know I've made the right decision or I've um, done the right things in my life. Do you have a philosophy, saying or quote, that influences you? Yes, Les Brown is a famous motiva motivational speaker and he says this quote, leave it better than you found it. And I have always tried to instill that in my work ethic, whatever position or whatever job I take on, I try to leave it better than I found it. And um, no matter whatever happens here in Manatee County, I within myself will know that I've left it better than I found it. And what advice would you give to a young woman beginning her life's work? The advice I would give to a young woman is, one, 
Know that you always have to be better than your male counterparts. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. <laughs> Two, always work as if you are interviewing for that next job. Work as if, as if you're, you're preparing yourself for the next position, the next promotion, and do it with grace and with a smile. Thank you. So what lesson was the hardest to learn? I think the hardest lesson for me to learn was, was when I realized that um, being in leadership means you sometimes have to sacrifice a piece of yourself. Um, I had to learn that um, there were things that normally I would not do if, if it was just left to me, but for the greater good, I had to change something about myself. Uh, in reality, I'm really a homebody, and I really would just be very happy if I could just be home and uh, doing whatever it is I want to do. But I understand that for the greater good, I constantly need to be in the presence of others. I constantly need to be out in the public letting them know how great uh, our school district is or being a part of activities that really are not a my everyday walk of life. Um, I'm very, uh, very much into sports. So I attend every single l home football game. And I do it not just because I love sports, but I do it so that the students see the superintendent thought enough to come to one of our games or she's there cheering us on. So, you know, you have to sometimes make that decision if you're going to be in leadership you may have to sacrifice something of yourself. So is there anything that we didn't ask that you would like to share with us? Well, you didn't ask, um, what do you see for the future of the school district of Manatee County? And what I see is that through one, thank you for pa helping us pass this referendum for our school district. And, and what I see now is a community that has embraced its school district. The school district has um, come from a very dark place and now is back on solid ground and the community along with, and I see so many women who have contributed to helping that effort. Uh, I see Bronwyn Baytald, she's here with the United Way, who's the lead agency on grade level reading. And it was that type of groundwork that needed to be done before we could come back and ask the voters to help the school district. So I believe the school district now is at, on, at a place where it's ready to go to that next level. It's ready to um, no longer be that diamond in the rough to now start going to be shaped and ready to be mounted for that big diamond ring uh, to represent this, the community of Manatee County and Manatee County can be very proud because it took not just women and it took committed men and women to make this school district be recognized again. It took a commitment, and, and, and it was more than a commitment. I truly believe it took an act of faith, a faith that was stronger than what the average person could see, to come into this school district, make the changes that needed to be made, and bring everyone along. And now our teachers um, will have competitive salaries that we can compete with our surrounding school districts. So thank you very much. So um, would, you please, uh, would you please introduce your guest today? Oh, well, my ch I wanted to invite my church home. So my pastor's wife, I first went Sister Holly, she is the epitome of grace and elegance. If, if you want to know what that looks like, just look at that lady right there. <laughs> so... <laughs> And everyone knows Barbara Harvey. So, <laughs> Barbara Harvey and Brenda Harvey. Everyone knows Brenda Harvey. 
And my, um, we're known as besties. My best friend, Waleen Herring Kayasso, I, I wanted her to come share this experience with me. So I am very happy to have my church family, my new fa the friends that I met when I first came to Manatee County, and my bestie that I've known for many years. Yes, thank you. I keep trying to sit down, and you won't That's right. Well, Dr. Green, you joined the ranks of the Manatee Women of Achievement for all the work that you do in the community. Thank you isn't enough for all you do to enrich the lives of others. But please accept this candle holder, and it's two pieces, so it does come apart, as a symbol of our gratitude and also a symbol of you lighting the way for others, which is our theme for today. Thank so you. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Please welcome Joan to our conversation. <laughs> so welcome. <laughs> so Joan, please share with us who or what was a major influence in your life and how it played out as you have lived. First of all, I want to say everybody warned me it was going to be daunting to follow Dr. Green, so I brought a few notes. <laughs> Um, I, I toyed with this answer because it's AAUW, it's women, but you kind of said the same thing. It was my dad. Um, he always held the bar just a little bit higher, and he dared me to succeed. Um, he taught me how to be independent, self-reliant, and strong, but he always had my back. So do you have a saying, philosophy, or quote that influences you? How many of you have seen The Post, the, the movie? Yeah. Oh. All right. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, my internship was at The Washington Post, so I had the honor of, of being in the same room with Catherine Graham and Ben Bradley. And um, Catherine Graham was the first female publisher of a major U.S. newspaper, and her quote is what I've lived my career by. Um, to love what you do and feel that it matters, how could anything be more fun? What advice would you give to a young woman beginning her life's work? I've tried to live with this advice, and I think I've succeeded to never take a job because you're a woman. You are a woman, and revel in that. But your life's work is because it's best for you, and then you're best for that dream. What lesson was the hardest to learn? Okay. This one was easy. It's <laughs> letting go. Um, and I still have that problem. My husband chides me all the time. But I finally learned that success meant building a team that gets it right even when I'm not around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is there, <laughs> is there anything you'd like to share that we didn't ask? Um, two things. on. Um, professional level, Manatee County has changed so much. I've been here almost 20 years, and um, it was, dare I say, it really was far more sexist. Um, I had a male publisher um, who hired me, was fabulous, but the leaders in the community, who were almost all, all men, wouldn't call me, wouldn't talk to me. They were used to men at the helm of the Braden Herald for forever. And finally, you know, it was, you know, Craig, they gotta talk to me. They've gotta call me. And it really broke down. And now I can't even imagine, you know, I mean anybody in the community just walks in the door and calls and it's I mean, this is a true testament to the strength of women leadership in Manatee County. Um, on a personal note, um, and this goes to the folks who are here at, at my table, too. I wish somebody had drilled into my thick skull how important it is to keep your friends close and strong and build on friendships. Um, leadership can be extremely lonely when it comes down to personal things. And your friends are far more valuable than you know. So would you please introduce your family and guests? My husband of almost three years, my first husband, Jim Jones, uh, Jim Smith. I can't believe I did that. 
<laughs> Don't tell Jim Jones, okay? <laughs> My reporter, Ryan. Um, that was off the record. <laughs> My friend Jan Barnes, my friends Tom and Chris Tollett, Becky Kness, who has been a dear friend with me, and Just for Girls has been one of my um, all-time favorite uh, to support. And Bronwyn, you've already been introduced. Bronwyn Bridal is, is, I'm honored to have you at my table. So, thank you. So, Joan, you also join the Manatee Women of Achievement. Please accept this as our thank you and a reminder of all the work you do and of our symbol of lighting the way for others. Congratulations thank and thank you. <laughs> our next honoree is Carla Nierman. Carla is the Executive Director of Art Center Manatee. Her career included work in nutrition, management positions, and fostering and growing businesses. With a move to Bradenton, she began a career at the Art Center and worked her way to executive director in 2012. Having a parent as an artist exposed her to artwork at a very young age. She has developed partnerships with local community agencies and created the Arts and Healing Program to further the arts and instill an appreciation. Her passion for the arts and the community have permeated her work. Please help me welcome Carla. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. <laughs> so who or what was a major influence in your life and how did it play out as you have lived? Before I go there, if I could, I'd love to say how incredibly humbled I am to be here today and how grateful I am to be in a room with such powerful, incredible women. I have a philosophy that when you put a bunch of powerful women together, you can truly move mountains. And so this is one impressive room of people. I'm not disregarding the men in the room either. <laughs> so to answer your question, which is not too different than Diana's or Joan's, it's undoubtedly family. My parents had six children, and while we were never financially rich, the household was always very, very rich in activity and relationships and passion. I don't ever remember them actually teaching me responsibility and commitment and integrity, but their modeling was a psychic megaphone, and it permeated all six of us children. They taught us how to make work play and joyful. They always infused creativity and joy into each process. And of course, when you have a crowd like that, teamwork was inevitable. Do you have a philosophy, saying, or quote that influences you? I do. I'm a big fan of this, and I've actually had many throughout the different chapters of my life. I have three currently. I'll be brief. This too shall pass. And I think most of us learn that with age, that if, don't get fixated. It will pass. Um, the second one is to lead with your heart. And obviously, I mean that figuratively, not literally. But I always find that things come out better when you lead with your heart, and you never know what will unfold with that. And the third is a quote that I've loved for many, many years. It's by author Stephen Covey, and it goes like this. Between stimulus and response, there is this gap, and therein lies your future. What advice would you give a young woman beginning her life's work? Well, this could be a very long list as well, but um, because I, or my personality, is that I love interacting with people, I would suggest mentors, talking to people. So a young person really needs to be talking to people, listening to people, and in a sense, gathering. Throughout the years, I didn't recognize that I was gathering information all along, just in dialoguing with people. And it turned out that there was some true gifts in that later down the road that I had no idea were going to be very influential in my life. 
So definitely mentors and also mentoring other people. What lesson was the hardest to learn? You know, I laughed about this one because talk about showing your soft underbelly. Um, there's been a many lessons, and I'm not sure I've actually learned them. I tend to think that it's like a, an onion where there's all these layers, and you think you've learned, and then you revisit, and you think you've learned, and you revisit. But for me, my greatest challenge is that wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, Life is unfolding perfectly. If I could just see the big picture, I could relax into that and know that. And is there something we didn't ask that you would like to share? Um, yes, there is. Why do I do what I do? Those who are around me frequently will tell you that I say all the time that wherever you are, whatever you're doing. You can be the President of the United States, you could be washing the floors, that this is all just this beautiful platform to become a better human being. I truly think that it doesn't really matter what you're doing, it's how you're doing it, and also can we do it with a modicum of grace. Would you please introduce your family and guests? I would love to, thank you. My husband, Jim Hamilton, and my sister, Colleen Green. I have the president of my board, Marianne Barnaby. Another board member, Linda Emberg. Carol Craw. Friend and staff member, Kathy Maiju. Christina Souter. And I would truly like to thank Mickey, because Mickey is part of your group, and she has introduced the Arts Center to you. And again, you guys are doing great stuff in the community. So, Carla, you also joined the Manatee Women of Achievement, so please accept this candle holder. And it is two pieces. I see, oh, I good, see. Good, it's good, dangerous. Good. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Um, as a symbol of our congratulations and appreciation as you continue to light the way for others. Thank so you. thank you and congratulations. You. Our next honoree is Jane Plitt. Jane is a writer and author who ran a thriving business until she became enthralled with the Martha Matilda Harper story. She was appointed a visiting scholar to the University of Rochester to pursue her research, and the result was a book entitled Martha Matilda Harper and the American Dream, How One Woman Changed the Face of Modern Business. Jane later released a young children's book and co-wrote a young adult version of the Harper story. She received numerous awards and honors, including Rochester Small Business Person of the Year, Outstanding Women in New York State Award, she served as the executive director of the National Organization for Women, served on Realize Bradenton's board as vice president of the Manatee chapter of the League of Women Voter and president of the Manatee County Library Foundation. Please help me welcome Jane to our conversation. <laughs> So Jane, who or what has been a major influence in your life and how has that played out? Like Carla, I would first like to thank all of you and let um, you know how humbled I feel being here among true leadership. And when we talk about light, AUW and this branch has truly been the light that has transformed so many people um, with education. So thank you very much. Then, um, the influences, there's been more than one. When, when you're 70 years old, which is what I am recently, um, there were three influences. I had a grandmother who died when I was seven, and I dedicated my first book to her. And that's indicative of the fact that she took me seriously. And when she spoke to me, she thought that there was an intelligence coming back. 
And so she inspired me to believe in myself. And she also, through circumstances, became the first woman president of the national business women in her area because she demonstrated that a woman could, in fact, successfully support a family and run a family. So she was a huge stimulus for me to believe in myself. And then there was my father who continued that while he was a politically conservative person, he actually believed in the individual. And he began to be offended that I didn't have opportunities because I was a girl. I couldn't be a page in Congress because only boys could be and the like. So he demonstrated to me that I mattered even though I was a girl. And then at the same time, I grew up in the 60s when there was the whole, a lot of s reflections about the Holocaust. And when you think about the Holocaust and you recognize that people, whether because of uh, their religion, whether because of their background, their sexual gender, their mental health, could be identified and killed and tortured simply in the name of some other um, philosophical belief that was evil, stimulated me to believe that that should never again happen and that I needed the courage to stand up for all people. Um, and lastly, Martha Matilda Harper. I stumbled on her. Here was this servant girl from the time she's seven, and yet she transforms her life and the life of other poor women. So all of those people have propelled me to believe in the individual, in the potential, and in the rights of everyone. So do you have a philosophy saying or quote that influences you? I do, I do, and they, they um, were influenced by two men. Jack London wrote, I would rather be ashes than dust. I would rather that my spark should burn out in a brilliant blaze than it should be stifled by dry rot. The function of man or woman is to live not to exist. I shall not waste my days trying to prolong them. I shall use my time. And that follows with Reverend Niemuller's quote, reminding us that he didn't necessarily stand up for the Jews when the Nazis came, or he didn't stand up for the Catholics or the trade unionists, so that when they came for him, there was no one to stand up. And so both of those have influenced me to believe every moment matters and we must use them to help other people. What advice would you give to a young woman beginning her life's work? Be passionate about whatever you pursue. Be determined because it's true, it may not be an equal world yet. Um, network, use every contact you can possibly find and keep, um, I used to say a Rolodex, but now, uh, you know, <laughs> record it in your contact list. And um, finally, and I think probably most important, be flexible because whatever pattern you're on and route you're on right now likely will change. So seize opportunities that come up. What was the hardest lesson to learn? Like everyone, I'm still learning it. But um, no surprise, it's hard when people don't agree with you. And um, <laughs> I am working on compassionate heart so that when there are people who are nasty and um, disagreeable, that I look for and can respond to them 
with a compassionate heart. I'm still working on it, but it does help. Is there something that we didn't ask that you would like to share with us? Yes, uh, I would like you to ask, what can older women do? And the answer is everything. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, yes. Would you please introduce your family and guests? Um, well, my beloved husband of 45 years who has dealt with me <laughs> deserves a round of applause, Jim Broen. And I have a cousin here, a real cousin, who is Sue Ritzer, my first cousin from Sarasota. <laughs> and then I have lots of wonderful people who feel like family. And I want to first give um, credit to Rosalie Schaefer from the League of Women Voters and all leaguers who, in fact, are standing up so that all of us have the right to vote and be informed. So she and the League is extraordinary. So thank you all for coming. And then there's Susie Bowie, um, who heads the Manatee Community Foundation. And she and her wonderful staff are like family teaching me and all of you, possibly, um, about how to be effective donors. So thank you so much for coming. And there is sitting next to her, Stephanie Kite from Planned Parenthood, the new executive director. And she represents for me the hope for young people to learn about their bodies and be informed and enlightened. So thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> Next to her is Dennis Reese, who is on the board of Planned Parenthood. And next to Dennis is Susan Rawson, who found me in a newcomers club and has become like family and friends. So thank you so much for coming. Linda Jaffe is um, a friend from Rochester who led the way to Sarasota. And it is delicious that we continue to share our friendship and family together. And um, there also are the blocks, um, Vic and Diane, who also found me at a wedding and said, oh, you're coming to Bradenton. We will introduce you. <laughs> um, and uh, Margaret Tusing is um, sitting there. And you wouldn't know, but she's my emergency angel. And when we had to evacuate, she and her husband scooped in and emptied my refrigerator. So she really <laughs> needs a round of applause. <laughs> And two other people, Diana Shoemaker from the Manatee Habit Habitat represents um, for all of us the possibility of decent housing. So thank you so much for what you do. And Ashley Brown is here, has been honored, and we all know what she represents for women and people who can use counseling. So thank you so much for coming. And lastly, um, and I'm having a, a, a senior moment to remember, Barbara, <laughs> Barbara thank you. <laughs> Barbara and Joe were sailors, and they came ashore, and we have met, and um, I am ever grateful that they are part of my family. So thank you so much. Yes. Jane, you also join the Outstanding Women of Achievement for Manatee. Please accept this as our thank you and congratulations as you, you light the way for others. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay. I still love you. Yeah. 
Our next honoree is Carolyn Reynolds. <laughs> Carolyn was a music specialist and choral director in Manatee County Schools for 31 years and was honored as the Florida Music Educator of the Year. She served as a board member in the Florida Music Education Association, was president of the Florida Elementary Music Association, and taught classes at both the University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee, and State College of Florida. She's presently the organist at Trinity United Methodist Church and is a board member of the American Guild of Organists. Her achievements extend well beyond music and music education. She helped provide the foundation for the Women's Resource Center serving as the board of trustee and then as chairman of the board. She was also a board member of the Manatee Cultural Alliance. Carolyn's leadership is evident in all she does, especially for our branch. She is a charter member and currently serves as membership director and has been a uh, president. So we congratulate Karen, uh, Carolyn, and I know this is a special day. This is also her birthday. So, yay. <laughs> this, is a, this is the biggest party I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carolyn, congratulations. Who or what was a major influence in your life, and how did that play out as you have lived? First of all, I'd like to add my expression of thanks, I think, to, <laughs> for being nominated. I feel very humbled. Uh, didn't want to do this, but um, I'm glad to share my story with you because I think it's important. I grew up in a not perfect home in the South, but one with parents who loved me and cherished me and fostered feelings of self-respect, confidence, independence of thought, and also made sure that I experienced the importance of honesty, responsibility, and hard work. I grew up immersed in my church. When I was a baby, apparently I stopped breathing and my mother, who had already lost one child, came in and promised God that she would give me back to him if, I would, if he would just let me live. And so she encouraged me in my church activities. I grew up immersed in the church. I spent a great deal of my teenage years trying to figure out what I needed to do, what God wanted me to do with my life. I also grew up with segregation. With all of the inequities and injustices that Jim Crow laws perpetuated throughout the South. And I had no idea about them. I knew that there were colored and white water fountains. I knew there were separate bathrooms. But that's just the thing, way things were in my life. And I had no reason to question that. And my cocooned view of the world was shattered when Rosa Parks refused to give up a seat on the bus in my hometown. Bus travel that I had engaged in all of my life. And I knew immediately that if my skin had been a little darker, I would have been involved in that because of what my parents had taught me and how they lived. And I was also absolutely appalled and embarrassed and even ashamed of the way that so many people in my community whom I loved and respected growing up reacted to the bus boycott, to the subsequent civil rights movement. And I just couldn't believe it. And I resolved that to the best of my ability, I would not be like that. I would love people no matter the color of their skin, no matter what their situation was. It was like blinders came off. And I began to view the world and the people in it who, might, by the way, I'd learned Jesus loves the little children in a whole different way. 
I haven't done that perfectly, but I have tons of friends here today, and I'm so thankful for all of you. And I'm so thankful that I ended up here in Manatee County to live. Mother Teresa said that we should do small acts with, wait, I have to read it because I've forgotten it already. That's part of having a birthday. <laughs> Oh, no, that's in my next question. I won't say that yet. That's right. <laughs> we're, we're ready for that, too. So what is your philosophy saying or quote that influences you? Bloom where you're planted. Uh, I heard this first, and I didn't think very much about it. And then I kept thinking about it. And a very beloved professor said, you ought to, said the same thing Dr. Green said, you ought to leave every situation better than what you found it. And Mother, Ter here's my quote. <laughs> Mother Teresa said, we should do small things with great love. So what advice would you give a young woman beginning her life's work? Since I have four granddaughters sitting here, yeah. just close your ears because you've heard this too many times. <laughs> Keep an open mind and explore every opportunity as it presents itself. Be flexible. Somebody else said that. Things aren't always going to go the way that you planned. And mostly, find something that you absolutely love doing that gives you the incentive to get out of bed in the morning and go and make a difference. What lesson was the hardest to learn? I'm not sure that I've learned it. Um, that I can't make things right. I can't make things perfect. M. R. Lambright, who many of you remember and know, said to me, Carolyn, who put you in charge of the world? <laughs> and I guess nobody did, and I guess that's the reason that that it's not right. It wouldn't have been right if I was in charge of it anyway, but. And is there something that we didn't ask that you'd like to share? Yes. <laughs> because of economic factors, each of my parents only completed the eighth grade. And they were determined that that would not be the case with their children. They saw education as the open sesame to a better life. When I was a toddler, my mother read books to me all the time. My father sang to me. And when I entered school, there was no question that I'd do work, hard work, work my best, and behave and respect my teachers. I was the first person in my larger family that ever went to college, much less finished. Public education was valued and supported. And my concern for my country now, I, and, and I want to say this first of all, I am so thankful that we passed the referendum for the schools. I was sick the night before, and I did not follow the returns because I was so afraid that we wouldn't do it, but we did it. And I think that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> uh, it seems, though, that there are forces in our country now that are trying, and have been for several years, to be dismantling the public education system as we knew it. And some of those people are people that grew up with the benefits of public education. I read recently that nationally, our schools are now more segregated than they were in the 1950s. Our teachers and administrators are asked to do more with less. There is a dearth of involved parents demanding quality education, not only for their children, which every parent wants the best for their children, but for all of those other children that, whose parents don't have the luxury that some of us have. There's, 
as I spent my career in public education, I know that the best moment that some of my students had, the best hours of their day, were those that were spent in school. And we have to have an educated populace if we're going to have democracy. I just finished reading the biography of U.S. Grant. And as a Southerner, I can assure you, he was not my favorite character growing up. <laughs> I really didn't know anything more about him. I knew about the Civil War, and I've read a lot of that as an adult. But I didn't know anything about his presidency. And one of the things that he was most concerned about and that he worked so hard on was that the people of our country could be educated no matter where they lived or who they were. I am a product of public education. Without it, I wouldn't be standing here today. And I suggest that everybody in this room, whether you have children or not, we have to support our public schools. We have to make sure that our children have a firm education. And Carolyn, would you please introduce to your family and guests? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I have a table full of relatives right here. I have my oldest child, Jan, who is a product of Manatee Public Schools, and my son, David, and then I have four granddaughters, three of which grew up, well, four, actually, which grew up mostly in Manatee Public Schools. And I'm very proud of them, and I'm so thankful that they came. They didn't come to celebrate this, I hate to tell you. They came for, because it was Mimi's birthday. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and they had to do something with me today. <laughs> And then at the, uh, I have lots of friends from my church, from my book clubs, uh, from the Women's Resource Center uh, group, and uh, I have some former students here too. And um, I'm very grateful for, for all of them. And then at the table with my family is my friend Shelby Fullerton, who's also my boss at church. And she and I started teaching in Manatee Public Schools within a year of each other. And um, I'm delighted to have all of them here. Yes, yes. <laughs> Carolyn, congratulations and thank you. You join the outstanding Women of Achievement. Let, please accept this to symbolize your gift of lighting the way for thank others. You. Thank I you. Oh. I have to explain these signs in case you can't see them. They say other leg, Carolyn. I go to the Y, which is another, uh, I do water aerobics. And the, uh, many people at this table are from the Y. And I am one of those special learners. <laughs> when the teacher it changes legs, I don't always. And I have a few friends over here to remind me. And they remind me in school, I mean in the water. To, it's the other leg, Carolyn, we've already changed. <laughs> Get with it. <laughs> Thank you. Today we added five outstanding women to our Bradenton Branch Women of Achievement. Each of these dynamic women have inspired us this morning and really have made a difference as they work to improve the lives of others. Please join me in congratulating them one more time. Thank you so much for all that you do. Um, you may have noticed on your table there is a uh, tech savvy flyer that's one of our major projects for AAUW. So if you happen to know a middle school girl who might be interested in coming to a one-day um, conference that focuses on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, please look for that flyer. It, this is our third year. It's a wonderful event, and we appreciate any encouragement of, of our middle school girls to attend.
Thank you very, very much for being here today. We want to congratulate all of our basket winners, but especially our five honorees. Please don't forget we want a picture, but congratulations. Thank you so much for being here. Plan to be joining us next year. Thank you. Have a great day.